through the internet, across the wires, out of your screen and into your ear holes. It's kind of gross when you think about it, but that's what we're doing. We're here. It's Monday, and I'm live, and we're going to do some Bible study tonight, as soon as some people show up. How's the world out there? Anybody here yet? Hello. Go away. Better. Had to set my phone up. It's been a crazy weekend. I played two shows this weekend in two different parts of the state. I worked on a motorcycle all day one day. I cleaned out a trailer and sold it one day. And then Father's Day was one day. Hey, there's April. Welcome to the show, honey. Good to see you. Good to see you, too. Pinch poke, you owe me a Coke. I was just uh, reminiscing about how long the weekend was, and I'm still recovering. It's Monday, though. It's all better on Monday. Manic Monday. Welcome all to Untethered. We love you. Well, it's just you and me right now, but it'll be that way soon. Ah. You have CJ? Hello, CJ. I have brisk tea. That's what I'm drinking tonight. Brisk. Brisk. Ooh, it's brisk. I don't know why they call it brisk. It's not really brisk. At the store. Bear with me. Me. I will. You. Hey, there's somebody else here. Welcome to the show. Da, 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 da. It's Monday. Make you feel like you're doing something on a Monday. I have been lazy, lazy, lazy all day today. Hey, brother. Hockey night in Tampa. Go Bolts. Good to see you, Kev. Good to see you got your mind on sports as always. Me too, sort of. Different kind of sport. Same kind of uh, game, though. Sorry, I got something hung in the back of my throat. Mm. Ate a cheeseburger and found a bone. You're out of sweet tea at Publix, OMG. Publix don't have any sweet tea? We'll go for the pre-made stuff like this. Maybe they got some of this. That's crazy. They said we'd have food shortages. Nobody knew that we're talking about drinking, though. Gotta have tea. I like me some sweet tea. I right, peach tea. I like peach tea. Peach tea's pretty good. I kinda like my tea regular though, you know what I mean? I'm a regular Joe kind of Joe. I don't like a lot of flavors in my stuff. I don't even like lemon in my tea. I think lemons and teas are two different trees and they should not detwain meat. But that's just me. I like my tea to taste like tea, and I like my coffee to taste like coffee. If I wanted Kool-Aid, I'd buy Kool-Aid. Like that cappuccino mess. Brew some tea. That's right. Make it like we used to. That's the best kind of tea anyway. You can make it like you want it then. Anytime I buy tea, it's either not sweet enough or it's too sweet or it's got too many flavors in it. Just want tea. I 
I have gotten it where it was too sweet. Put too much sugar in it. That's all right, though. This brisk tea is pretty good, though. It ain't too lemony. It's got a little bit of a lemon flavor, but very little, very faint. And uh, mostly it's just tea. So I like it. I really ain't crazy about lemons in my teas, though. I am busy writing the sketch for the Hunter Biden Hour. Comrade Jake, hey, let me know when you get done. I'll, I'll air it. I got your back. I'll be your man. I'll be your Huckleberry. I'll be your man Friday. My man Friday. Remember in the old days when they had man servants? <laughs> what an insult that must have been to be called your man, get called somebody's man servant. This is my gay guy over here. I don't know. Man servant. The only person I'm a man servant to is the Lord. I serve no other man. I don't even serve my mama. Old lady tried to tell me what to do. I said, my mama didn't tell me what to do. What makes you think you got a, ch a chance? You ain't telling me what to do. I'm my own man. That's the way you got to be. You got to make your own decisions. Do your own thing. They tried to call me a mama's boy because my mama was my best friend. But that's where I drew the line right there. She's my friend. Nothing else. She did she instructed me, you know, she told me information, but I made up my mind what I wanted to do, where I wanted to go, when I wanted to come back, from about eleven years old on. I mean, that's the way it was back in those days. It ain't that way anymore. I've come to realize that things are different. People are different. There's different goals. When I was a kid, all I could think about was growing up, getting, being a man, you know, having a job, having money coming in, having a, a life. Kids today ain't thinking about that. All they're thinking about is being a YouTube star or whatever. They ain't thinking about the future. Probably because they don't have much of one. Because of people like Joe Biden. I don't know. It's bleak. I don't know what, what the future holds, but it can't be good. Not the way it's going right now. All I can tell you is learn to grow tomatoes and other vegetables. Because it's going to get to a point where you're going to need them. Get used to eating cat. Because let me tell you what. I get hungry. First thing's going is my cat. They make good sandwiches. And I got plenty of deer and squirrels around here. I ain't going to starve to death. I promise you that. I am too pretty to starve. What do you think? Are you going to starve? Or will you run out in the yard with a knife and kill something? How far will you go? I saw a flag today that said F. Biden. Ah. Yeah. I see a lot of those around here. I live in Trump country, so, you know. Thank God for that. There's still some liberals around here, though. When I say liberal, I'm not talking about people that are of a liberal persuasion. I'm talking about crazy-ass left-wing people. Ain't the same thing. No, I'll do what I got to do to survive. That's right, girl. 
do what you got to do. Learn how to shoot a gun or a slingshot or make a trap or something. Eat traps, whatever you got to do. Don't starve. Hey, Caucasian Sasquatch. I have a question before you start. I have an answer before I start. What do you need, buddy? Right now, I'm just chit-chatting anyway, so what do you got? Lay it on me. And copyright. <laughs> mm. That's a good tea. Oh, by the way, Sasquatch, happy Father's Day. Sorry I didn't see you yesterday or I would have wished you one then. Did anyone see the video audio book I uploaded? I have not. What's it about? Where can I find it? I'll watch it after I'm done. You too, brother. I signed on the roof. You signed on the roof? I don't know what you mean. Be more specific. I got the YouTube brother. That was for the uh, Father's Day comment. But what do you mean by you signed on the roof? It's on my channel. It's the Pirate Mistress of S Ersatz. Pirate of Ersatz. I'll check it out as soon as I'm done. Sounds interesting. What was the question? Have I seen it? That was that the question? Sorry, no, I hadn't seen it. But I will see it. I've been kind of busy this weekend. I barely had enough time to do the podcast last night between sleeping. Hello, Mr. Squatch, says Kevin. I hired someone to do my roof today. Yes, you answered it. Okay. Well, good. Maybe you get your roof done. If I were closer, I'd do it for you. I don't think there's enough money in the world to get me to run back and forth to Georgia. About however long it takes to do it. I'd do it for free, but the gas costs money. And also the ride, because I don't have one of those right now either. But I am happy to report that I have managed to make just enough money to pay my land taxes this weekend. So that is a huge load off of my back. Ugh. Now if I can manage to keep it until tomorrow, I'll take it right to them. That's hard to come up with that much money at one time, but I did it. Now I don't have to worry about it for a whole year. Next on my list, get my internet cut back on. That's the next biggest thing I got to do. And then after that, car. I'm going to keep riding my motorcycle until I can save up money to buy me a decent automobile, but I, I got it in the works. It's coming. Got to have it. I am too old to be on a motorcycle as a main mode of transportation. A motorcycle is a leisure object. It is not meant to be your only ride. I say every time it rains. Also, the damn thing breaks down as much as a boat does. About every month, I got to work on it. It's a Harley. I bought it because it's supposed to be American-made tough. I've worked on it every month since I've had it, just about it. You ain't supposed to do that. You ain't supposed to run without question. If it was a Honda, I still wouldn't have worked on it. I hate to say that, but it's true. 
I've owned several Hondas in my life. I've never done any work to any of them. No tires, no nothing. I think I put one tire on one one of my bikes a long time ago. <clears throat> this bike, every year I got to put tires on it. Every year. That's 200 bucks every year for tires. Per tire. 200 bucks per tire. That's uh Ride a Harley, ride the best. Ride a mile, walk the rest. Ha <laughs> ha! Yeah, that's about right. That's about right. So, I think what I'm going to do is buy me a Honda for a supplemental bike. By the way, just so you know the, the price range we're talking about, prices vary, but just know that I could buy three Hondas for the price I paid for my Harley. Three full size automobiles made by Honda for the price I paid for that one. That's crazy. For the price I paid for my Harley, I could have a fleet of motorcycles with a little lesser value. That's why I expected it to be worth it. You know what I mean? You get what you pay for, that kind of thing. Not so. What I found out almost immediately was that everything on it was cheap. And I had to buy replacements that were made well. You know, like the bolts. All the bolts are aluminum. So the first time you take them off, they strip. You can't put them back. They're not made to take on and off. They're made to put on and leave on. So I had to buy stainless steel bolts to put back in it. Which is like, I think it was like 80 bucks for a set of bolts. But that's a, that, that's not much money, but over time, you think about that, every time you work on something, you got to buy a set of bolts for it to put it back together. It's ridiculous. The uh, voltage regulator was cheap. Cashing out now, y'all. Oh, you're at the store, that's right. April, we have wings, boneless, and cheese sticks. Yummy. I had two cheeseburgers in paradise for dinner tonight. That's, that was my dinner. And they were delicious. And yesterday, I had Subway. I don't have a lot of options around here. It's McDonald's, Bojangles, Subway, Pizza Hut, Chinese. Or the gas station that makes cheeseburgers. That's it. I put audiobook of Call of Cthulhu over game Call of Cthulhu. Okay. That's interesting. Little Lovecraftian stuff. I know a little bit about Lovecraft. H.P. Lovecraft and his Cthulhu-esque writing. Although I don't know what everybody sees in it. It's like a replacement god, if you ask me. Ain't happy with the one you got? Make up a new one. All right. It's about that time. It's 8.49, about to turn 8.50. It's time we get started. If you got your Bibles handy, crack them open to the book of Ezekiel, chapter 24, verse 25. 24-25, that's where we're going to start at tonight. Right smack dab in the middle of a sentence. So I can't always choose when to quit. For whatever reason... Last night, I quit in the middle of a sentence. So, here we go. You guys ready? Ready to rock and roll? <clears throat> also, thou son of man, shall it not be in the day when I take from them their strength, the joy of their glory, the desire of their eyes, and that whereupon they set their minds, their sons and their daughters, that he that escapeth in that day shall come unto thee. 
to cause thee to hear with thine ears. In that day shall thy mouth be open to him which is escaped, and thou shalt speak and be no more dumb. So basically, shut him up or he can't talk until the time comes that the right guy comes along and then he'll be able to speak. And thou shalt be a sign unto them, and they shall know that I am the Lord. And the word of the Lord came unto me again, saying, Son of man, set thy face against the Ammonites, and prophesy against them, and say unto the Ammonites, Hear the word of the Lord God, thus saith the Lord God, because thou saidest, Aha, against my sanctuary, when it was profane, and against the land of Israel, when it was desolate, and against the house of Judah, when they went into captivity, behold, therefore will I deliver thee into the men of the east for a possession, and they shall set their palaces in thee, and make their dwellings in thee, and they shall eat thy fruit, and they shall drink thy milk. You're not going to have nothing. They'll take it right from you. And I will make Rabbi a stable for camels, and the Ammonites a couching place for flocks. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. For thus saith the Lord God, because thou hast clapped thine hands, and stamped with the feet, and rejoiced in the heart with all thy despite. With all thy despite? And rejoiced in the heart with all thy despite against the land of Israel. It's just a weird way to use the word despite. Behold, therefore I will stretch out my hand upon thee, and I will deliver thee for a spoil to the heathen, and I will cut thee from off the people, off from the people, I will cut thee off from the people, and I will cause thee to perish out of the countries. I will destroy thee, and thou shalt know that I am the Lord. Think he's serious? I think he's serious. Thus saith the Lord God, because that Moab and Seir do say, Behold, the house of Judah is like unto all the heathens. Therefore, behold, I will open the side of Moab from the cities, from his cities which are his frontiers, the glory of the country, Beth Jeshemoth, Balamion, and cure a fame. Cure a fame. Yep, that's it. Unto the men of the east with the Ammonites. And I will give them a possession. I will give them in possession that the Ammonites may not be remembered among the nations. In other words, he's going to breed them out. There'll be no more Ammonites. They'll slowly turn into Moabites. And I will execute judgments upon Moab, and they shall know that I am the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God, because that Edom hath dealt against the house of Judah by taking vengeance, and hath greatly offended and revenged himself upon them. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, I will also stretch out my hand upon Edom, and I will cut off man and beast from it, and I will make it desolate from Teman. And they of Gedan shall fall by the sword. And I will lay my vengeance upon Edom by the hand of my people, Israel. And they shall do in Edom according to mine anger and according to my fury. And they shall know my vengeance, saith the Lord God. Thus saith the Lord God, because the Philistines have dealt by revenge, and have taken revenge with despiteful heart to destroy it for the old hatred. Therefore thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will stretch out mine hand upon the Philistines, and I will cut off the Cherethims, and destroy the remnant of the sea coast. There will be nothing left. And I will execute great vengeance upon them with furious rebukes, and they shall know that I am the Lord when I shall lay my vengeance upon them. All right, Samuel L. Jackson, calm down. 
And it came to pass in the eleventh year, in the first day of the month, that the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, because that Tyrus hath said against Jerusalem, Aha, she is broken, that was the gate of the people, she is turned unto me. I shall be replenished, now she is laid waste. Therefore thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against thee, O Tyrus. I will cause many nations to come up against thee, as the sea causes the waves to come up, like crashing waves on the beach. That's how many nations are going to come after you. If you think you're going to take Jerusalem just because you want it, it's not going to happen. And they shall destroy the walls of Tyrus and break down her towers. I will also scrape her dust from her and make her like the top of a rock smooth. It shall be a place for the spreading of nets in the midst of the sea, for I have spoken it, saith the Lord God, and it shall become a spoil to the nations, and her daughters which are in the field shall be slain by the sword, and they shall know that I am the Lord. You, you starting to get the point here? The problem is they're forgetting who's in charge. That's the problem. They're spending so much time playing with false idols and putting their minds up on things that they ain't got no business thinking about or doing and forgetting about the statutes and the uh, judgments and the edicts and precepts of the Lord, his commandments, which is what they were tasked to do. This is the reason they were given all this land for free. They didn't have to work for it. It's theirs. So all they have to do is follow God. And they have spent many, many years not following God. That's why this entire book ends every refrain with, They shall know that I am the Lord. You think you forgot now? Wait till I remind you a few times. You'll remember. For thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will bring upon Tyrus Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, a king of kings from the north, with horses and with chariots and with horsemen and companies and much people. He shall slay with the sword thy daughters in the field, and he shall make a fort against thee, and cast a mount against thee, and lift up the buckler against thee, or the shield. <laughs> and he shall sit engines of war against thy walls and with his axes he shall break down thy towers by reason of the abundance of his horses their dust shall cover thee thy walls shall shake at the noise of the horsemen and of the wheels and of the chariots and when he shall enter into thy gates as men enter into a city wherein is made a breach in other words he's going to tear the whole wall down when he comes in and you won't miss it. With the hooves of his horses shall he tread down all thy streets. He shall slay thy people by the sword. Thy strong garrisons shall go down to the ground. Ain't nothing but little guard shacks to him. And they shall make spoil of thy riches and make a prey of the, thy merchandise. And they shall break down thy walls and destroy thy pleasant houses. And they shall lay thy stones and thy timber and thy dust in the midst of the waters. Sounds pretty rough. And I will cause the noise of thy songs to cease. And the sound of thy harps shall be no more heard. And I will make thee like the top of a rock smooth. Thou shalt be a place to spread nets upon. Thou shalt be built no more, for I, the Lord, have spoken it, saith the Lord God. Thus saith the Lord God to Tyrus, Shall not the isles shake at the sound of thy fall? When the wounded cry, when the slaughter is made in the midst of thee, then all the princes of the sea shall come down from their thrones and lay away their robes and put off their broidered garments 
They shall clothe themselves with trembling. They shall sit upon the ground and shall tremble at every moment and be astonished at thee. And they shall take up a lamentation for thee and say to thee, How art thou destroyed that what inhabited of seafaring men, the renowned city, which was strong in the sea, she and her inhabitants, which caused their terror to be on all that ha haunt it. Now shall the isles tremble in the day of thy fall? Yea, the isles that are in the sea shall be troubled at thy departure. April says, welcome all. Don't forget to hit that like button. We appreciate you all. Much love. Thank you, sweetheart. Appreciate you. For thus saith the Lord God, when I shall make thee a desolate city like the cities that are not inhabited, when I shall bring up the deep upon thee, and the great waters shall cover thee, when I shall bring thee down with them that descend into the pit, with the people of old time, that's the people that were before Christ, the people that didn't get a chance to have salvation. They went straight to hell in those days. All right. The people of old time, and shall set thee in the low parts of the earth in places desolate of old, with them that go down to the pit, that thou be not inhabited. And I shall set glory in the land of the living. I will make thee a terror, and thou shalt be no more. Though thou be sought for, Yet shalt thou never be found again, saith the Lord God. The word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Now, thou son of man, take up a lamentation for Tyrus, and say unto Tyrus, O thou that art situate at the entry of the sea, you're situated, you're, you've set up yourself right there at the entrance of the sea, which art a merchant of the people for many isles. Thus saith the Lord God, O Tyrus, thou hast said, I am of perfect beauty. O Lord, it's hard to be humble when you're Tyrus in every way. Thy borders are in the midst of the seas. Thy builders have perfected thy beauty. Mm. They have made all thy ships boards of fir trees of Sinir. They have taken cedars from Lebanon to make masts for thee. Of the oaks of Bashan have they made thine oars. The company of the Ashurites have made thy benches of ivory, brought out of the isles of Chittim. Fine linen with broidered work from Egypt was that which thou spreadest forth to be thy sail, blue and purple from the isles of Elisha was that which covered thee. The inhabitants of Zidon and Arvad were thy mariners. Thy wise men, O Tyrus, that were in thee were thy pilots. The ancients of Gabal and the wise men whereof were in thee thy conquerors, I guess to keep the water out. All the ships of the sea with their mariners were in thee to occupy thy merchandise. This guy was a serious merchant dealer. I mean, he had everybody. He had connections everywhere. And he went to all the islands. I mean, he was wheeling and dealing with the best of them, this guy. And everybody wanted some of his merchandise because he was coming from all over, bringing all the good stuff in. They of Persia and of Lud and of Foot were in thine army, thy men of war. They hang the shield and the helmet in thee. They set forth thy comeliness. The men of Arvad with thine army were upon thy walls round about. And the Gamadims, the Gamadim, the Gamadims were in thy tower. And they hang their shields upon thy walls round about. They have made thy beauty perfect. Tarshish was thy merchant 
by reason of the multitude of all kinds of riches with silver, iron, tin, and lead, they traded in thy fairs. Javan, Tubal, and Meshik, Meshish, Meshik, Meshik. They were thy merchants. They traded the persons of men and vessels of brass in thy markets. So they were slave trading also. Funny that. I guess Tyrus was a white guy, huh? I'm just saying. They of the house of Tagarma traded in thy fairs with horses and horsemen and mules. The men of Dedan were thy merchants. Many isles were the merchandise of thine hand. They brought thee for the present horns of ivory and ebony. So this guy was in everything. He had his fingers in all kinds of pies. Syria was thy merchant by reason of the multitude of the waters of thy making. They occupied in thy fairs with emeralds, purple, and broidered work, and fine linen, and coral, and agate. Judah, the land of Israel, they were thy merchants. They traded in thy market wheat of Mineth and Pang, Panag, whatever that is, Panag, and honey, and oil, and balm. Damascus was thy merchant in the multitude of the waters of thy making. For the multitude of all riches in the wine of Heb Heb Helbon and white wool. Dan also and Javan, going to and fro, occupied in thy fairs, bright iron, cassia, calamus, were in thy market. The Dan was thy merchant in precious clothes for chariots. Arabia and all the princes of Qadar. They occupied with thee in lambs and rams and goats, and these were they thy merchants. The merchants of Sheba and Ramah, they were thy merchants. They occupied in thy fairs with chief of all spices, with all precious stones and gold. Haran and Kenna and Eden, the merchants of Sheba, Ashur, Kilmad, were thy merchants, or chill mad. I think it's kill mad. These were thy merchants in all sorts of things, in blue clothes, embroidered work, and in chests of rich apparel, bound with cords, and made of cedar among thy merchandise. Apparently in those days, having something that was the color blue was quite valuable, because blue is not a color that's natural to nature. You have to get it from hard places, like you have to, there's this little shell that you can get out of the ocean and if you crush enough of them up and mix it with urine it'll turn a certain color of blue and you can then dye your clothes in it but it takes forever it takes something like duck trunk loads of these things to make a little couple of ounces of blue i don't remember the exact weight but it's, it's incredibly hard to get blues and purples so that's why only royalty wore scarlet or reds because they were really hard to come by I know it's odd to think of that in our today, today's society with all the richness of colors that we have. But in those days, if it wasn't brown, you didn't have it. The ships of Tarshish did sing of thee in thy market, and thou wast replenished and made very glorious in the midst of the seas. Great reading, Jake. Love it. Thank you, sweetheart. Are you paying attention? What did I just say about the colors? Thy rowers have brought thee into great waters. The east wind hath broken thee in the midst of the seas. Thy riches and thy fares and thy merchandise and thy mariners and thy pilots and thy conquerors and the occupiers of thy merchandise and all thy men of war that are in thee and in all thy company which is in the midst of thee shall fall into the midst of the seas in the day of thy ruin. You think you're big? You think you're bigger than your britches? Wait till I get through with you. I'm going to let you all go right out in the ocean and sink. That'll be it. Done. That's the day of your ruin, and everybody that comes with you is going down too. 
the suburbs shall shake at the sound of thy of the cry of thy pilots and all that handle the oar the mariners and all the pilots of the sea shall come down from their ships they shall stand upon the land and shall cause their voice to be heard against thee and shall cry bitterly and shall cast up dust upon their heads or mourn for the loss of you they shall wallow themselves in ashes they shall make themselves utterly bald for thee and gird themselves with sackcloth and they shall weep for thee with bitterness of heart and bitter, bitter wailing in other words, they're going to mourn for you seriously, and you'll be able to hear them because you're right off the coast there. And in their wailing, they shall take up a lamentation for thee, a lament over thee, saying, What city is like Tyrus, like the destroyed in the midst of the sea? When thy waters went forth out of the seas, thou fillest many people. Thou didst enrich the kings of the earth with the multitude of thy riches and of thy merchandise. There is no city on earth greater than the group of people that followed Tyrus wherever he went. That's how many people was in his company. And because he picked a fight with God, he goes down almost without a fight. And no city bigger than his group of people. He basically fed all of the kings of the world with their merchandise. And he went down without a struggle. Just bloop, that's it. It's all done. In the time when thou shalt be broken by the seas, in the depths of the waters, thy merchandise and all thy company in the midst of thee shall fall. All the inhabitants of the islands shall be astonished at thee. And their kings shall be sore afraid. They shall be troubled in their countenance. The merchants among the people shall hiss at thee. Thou shalt be a terror and never shalt be any more. The word of the Lord came unto me again, saying, Son of man, say unto the princes of Tyrus, Thus saith the Lord God, because thine heart is lifted up, and thou hast said, I am a God. I sit at the seat of God in the midst of the seas, yet thou art a man, and not God. Though thou set thine heart as the heart of God, behold, thou art wiser than Daniel. There is no secret that they can hide from thee. With, the wisdom, with thy wisdom and with thine understanding, thou hast gotten thee riches and hast gotten gold and silver into thy treasures. Now, this is sarcasm, by the way. By thy great wisdom, by thy traffic, hast thou increased thy riches, and thine heart is lifted up because of thy riches. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, because thou hast set thine heart as the heart of God, behold, therefore I will bring strangers upon thee, the terrible of the nations, and they shall draw their swords against the beauty of thy wisdom, and they shall defile thy brightness. I'll show you what God can do. You think you're a God? Get out of this. They shall bring thee down to the pit, and thou shalt die in the deaths. That thou shalt die the deaths of them that are slain in the midst of the sea. Wilt thou yet say before him that slayeth thee, I am God? While the guy is sticking the sword in your chest, are you going to holler at him? I'm God. What are you doing? You can't kill me. I'm God. <laughs> yes, that didn't work out. But thou shalt be a man and no God in the hand of him that slayeth thee. Thou shalt die the deaths of the uncircumcised by the hand of strangers, for I have spoken it, saith the Lord God. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, Thou sealest up the sum full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. You're done, buddy. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering. The 
sardius, topaz, and the diamond, and the beryl, and the onyx, and the jasper, and the sapphire, and the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold, the workmanship of thy tabrets, and of thy pipes, was prepared in thee in the day that thou wast created. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth. By the way, that's Satan. Are you beginning to get a picture of who Tyrus is? Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, which is Satan, whose job it was at one, one time to guard the mercy seat, to protect it. And I have set thee so. By the way, the workmanship of thy tabrets and thy pipes was prepared in the day that, the, that thou was created. What he's saying here is I gave you the full package. I made you everything. I made you intelligent, talented, and beautiful, and strong. All of the above, and you're six foot tall and hung like a mule. I gave you everything. And I appointed you to be the cherub that covereth. And this is what you do to repay me. You rebel. You try to take my spot. You say you are God. You're not God. You're just a man. Much like Melchizedek was in the spirit of Christ, Tyrus was in the spirit of Satan. So you can say that Satan was king of Tyre for a while. Anyway, here we go. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God, and thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. By the way, there's a little scripture up above here that said that he was in the Garden of Eden. If you're wondering if I'm right about that third party in the Garden of Eden being Satan himself, this verifies it. I'll read it again so that you can hear it. I'll go up one. Thou hast been in Eden the garden of God, every precious stone was thy covering. And then it goes, tells you what all the stones are. And then it says, I made you the full package. Thy workmanship of thy tabrets and the pipes were prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. Thou art anointed cherub that covereth. That is the verification we're talking about Satan. And it tells you he was in the garden of God. So there you go. Proof positive that I'm right all the way around in Genesis. All you naysayers. Here we go. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day that thou wast created till iniquity was found in thee, until you sinned, until pride took hold in your heart. Thou, I read that. By the multitudes of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence and thou hast sinned. Therefore, I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. Your own beauty has corrupted your mind. All you can do is sit there and stare at yourself. Vanity has caused you to fail, to falter. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee. Thou hast defiled thy sanctuaries by the multitude of thine iniquities, by the iniquity of thy traffic. Therefore, I will bring forth a fire from the midst of thee. It shall devour thee. I will bring thee to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all them that behold thee. That's the lake of fire. That's when God will destroy Satan once and for all at the end. All they that know thee among the people shall be astonished at thee. Is this is the man? This is the man that caused all the trouble? It doesn't look like much. Thou shalt be a terror, and never shalt thou be any more. I will burn you up. You will cease to exist. Again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Zidon, 
and prophesy against it and say, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against thee, O Zidon, and I will be glorified in the midst of thee. And they shall know that I am the Lord when I shall have executed judgments in her and shall be sanctified in her. For I will send into her pestilence and blood into her streets and the wounded shall be judged in the midst of her by the sword upon her on every side. They shall know that I am the Lord. And there shall no more there shall be no more a pricking briar unto the house of Israel, nor any grieving thorn of all that are round about them, and despised them, and they shall know that I am the Lord. I'm going to get rid of all of the annoyances, all of the little pests that bother the hell out of people. I'm going to get rid of it all. Thus saith the Lord God, when I shall have gathered the house of Israel from the people among whom they are scattered and shall be sanctified in them in the sight of the heathen, then shall they dwell in their land that I have given to my servant Jacob. So many years ago, I gave that land to that family and they will have it, but they'll have it under my conditions. And if they don't, they're going to keep suffering until they get right. And then I'll give it to them. And they shall dwell safely therein, and shall build houses and plant vineyards. Yea, they shall dwell with confidence when I have executed judgment upon all those that despise them round about them. And they shall know that I am the Lord their God. In the tenth year, in the tenth month, in the twelfth day of the month, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, Set thy face against Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and prophesy against him and against all Egypt. Speak and say, Thus saith the Lord God. Behold, I am against thee, Pharaoh, king of Egypt, the great dragon that lieth in the midst of his rivers, which hath said, My river is mine own, and I have made it for myself. Really? You made it? How did you make it? What did you make it out of? Where'd you get the material to make it? What does it consist of? You didn't make it. You just took ownership of it. But I will put hooks in thy jaws and I will cause the fish of thy rivers to stick out, or, sorry, to stick under thy scales and I will bring thee up out of the midst of thy rivers and all the fish of thy rivers shall stick under thy scales. And I will leave thee thrown in the wilderness, into the wilderness. Thee and all the fish of thy rivers. Thou shalt fall upon the open fields. Thou shalt not be brought together nor gathered. I have given thee for a meat to the beasts of the field and to the fowls of the heaven. And all the inhabitants of Egypt shall know that I am the Lord. Because they have been a staff of reed to the house of Israel. You know what a reed is? It's a real flimsy stick. You can almost bend it in half without it breaking. When they took hold of thee by the hand, thou didst break and rend all their shoulder. And when they leaned upon thee, thou breakest and madest all their loins to be at a stand. In other words, it's not a very good walking stick. Every time they lean on you, it breaks or it folds, bends. It's not a good staff. Reed is a terrible, terrible material to make a staff out of because it's not strong. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will bring a sword upon thee and cut off man and beast out of thee. And the land of Egypt shall be desolate and waste, and they shall know that I am the Lord, because he hath said, This river is mine, and I have made it. Now, you do know that at one time Egypt was a very fertile land, full of greenery and a big river running through it. That river would be the River Nile. 
goes right through there. Now it's a desert, a desolate wasteland. And it has been since this moment. You want to know what happened to Egypt? That Pharaoh happened to Egypt. He went around telling everybody he made that river. He took credit from God. God didn't like it because he was already on a war path and he just took Egypt out while he was going. Now I'll get you to Egypt. Think you're better than everybody else? Let me show you too. Behold, therefore I am against thee and against thy rivers. And I will make the land of Egypt utterly waste and desolate from the tower of Syene even unto the border of Ethiopia. And so it is to this day. No foot of man shall pass through it, nor foot of beast shall pass through it. Neither shall it be inhabited forty years. And I will make the land of Egypt desolate in the midst of the countries that are desolate. And her cities among the cities that are laid waste shall be desolate for forty years. And I will scatter the Egyptians among the nations, and I will disperse them through the countries. Now, you want to know why the Egyptians that are there today don't look like the Egyptians that were there when they were writing on the walls? It's because they're not the same people. Because the Egyptians were scattered. And then other people came in and filled it in. And wherever there's a vacuum of power, people come in to fill it. And that's exactly what's always happened in Egypt. Yet, thus saith the Lord God, at the end of 40 years will I gather the Egyptians from the people whither they were scattered, and I will bring again the captivity of Egypt, and will cause them to return into the land of Pathros, into the land of their inhabitants, and they shall be there a base kingdom. And that shall be the basest of kingdoms. Neither shall it exalt itself any more above the nations, for I will diminish them, that they shall no more rule over nations. At one time, Egypt was a world power. When God got done with them, they were barely a nation, let alone a world power. And they never will be a world power again. They lost that opportunity because they took advantage of it. In the world of world powers, it has been Israel, it has been Egypt, it has been China, it has been the United States. I don't know where it's going next, but it's going somewhere, I promise. We won't be a world power much longer either. Why? Because we also took advantage of God's will. Look at the world we live in and the, and the rules that are being applied now. Look at how they've taken prayer out of school and how they've corrupted the children and almost an entire generation waste. This land flowing with milk and honey divided by rivers is almost no more. We will live to see it become under somebody else's rule. It's probably going to be Russia or China. I'd say maybe Russia because China's already had a shot at it years and years ago. But we'll see. You never know. <clears throat> and it shall be no more the confidence of the house of Israel which bringeth their iniquities to remembrance when they shall look after them but they shall know that I am the Lord and it came to pass in the seventh and twentieth year in the first month in the first day of the month the word of the Lord came unto me saying son of man Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon caused his army to serve a great service against Tyrus <clears throat> every head was made bald, every shoulder was peeled. Yet had he no wages, nor his army for Tyrus, for the service that he had served against it. Therefore thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will give the land of Egypt unto Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. And he shall take her multitude, and take her spoil, and take her prey, and it shall be the wages of his army or the wages for his army. I have given him the land of Egypt for his labor, wherewith he served against it. 
because they wrought for me, saith the Lord God. In that day will I cause the horn of the house of Israel to bud forth, and I will give thee the opening of the mouth in the midst of them, and they shall know that I am the Lord. And see, that moment he'll be able to speak again. And when he speaks, he's going to speak volumes. The word of the Lord came unto me again, saying, Son of man, prophesy and say, Thus saith the Lord God, Howl ye, woe, worth the day. For the day is near. Even the day of the Lord is near, a cloudy day. It shall be the time of the heathen. And the sword shall come upon Egypt, and great pain shall be in Ethiopia where the slain shall fall in Egypt, and they shall take away her multitude, and her foundations shall be broken down. Ethiopia and Libya and Lydia and all the mingled people and Chub and the men of the land that is in league shall fall with them by the sword. Thus saith the Lord, they also that uphold Egypt shall fall, and the pride of her power shall come down. From the tower of Syene shall they fall by the sword, saith the Lord God. And that's where we're going to stop for today, ladies and gentlemen. We'll pick up next week, chapter 30, verse 7, and continue until we finish this book. Fantastic, this book is. What a fantastic read. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. I hope it caused you to start thinking and question your reality. Question what's going on in the world. Look at what the Bible says has happened. And look at the places it says it happened to. And see if it matches. See if it is the kind of place the Bible says it is. And when you see that, look further. And you'll find more. Do that. Won't you please take a moment and hit that subscribe button and press the bell icon so you get notifications of when I'm going to be online and when my videos drop. Smash that like button. It's free. It's right in front of you. It takes no effort at all. All you got to do is press it once, and it really does help the channel with the algorithm, so I greatly appreciate you doing that. Share this video with somebody you love. Better yet, share it with somebody you don't love. Bring them into the family. Make them part of the fold. Be part of their solutions, not part of their problems. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you're thinking about. Question me, curse me, bless me, challenge me, confront me, conform me, drink my Kool-Aid, drink your own Kool-Aid. As long as you're thinking critically, that's what I want. Critical thought coming from that brain of yours. And hey, if you dig what I'm doing and you love the word of God and you can see the value of what I'm trying to build here and you'd like to be part of it, you'd like to help, or if you feel led to send your tithes offerings, your love offerings to a church that is teaching you, or if you just like to pat me on the back and say, hey, nice job, Jake. I appreciate it. Won't you consider supporting this channel? You can do that by going to paypal.me slash Jake Johnson Band. Paypal.me slash Jake Johnson Band. Every little bit helps. It's a win-win. It's a blessing to me. It's a blessing to you too because God notices these things. We do live in a reciprocal universe. I will do everything in my power to be worthy of that support and give you what you so strongly desire. Access. And with that, I'll take your questions and comments. And thank you. Thank you for your support. Thank you. I'm going to rewatch because I didn't get all of it. But I love you. I love you all. Hit the like button and feed Jake, everyone. We appreciate you. Much love to you. Thank you, dear. And may God bless all. Amen. Yep. I think a lot of people have trouble with the uh, angry God. He gets mad and people start scattering. I don't understand that, but I kind of understand it. It's kind of scary. I don't want to think about that God. But that God exists, and that's the God we need to please. So it's not hard to do either. Just follow his rules and do the best you can. And stop worrying so much about the little pity any sins that you have. You were already born a sinner. There's nothing you can do to stop that. That's why Christ died, so that we could be forgiven those sins. It's already happened. That transaction happened 2,000 years ago. So live and be merry and do your best. Try to be on God's good graces. And that's all you got to do. Try to have a relationship with your father. Talk to him. Talk to him just like you talk to me. I think so too, Jake. That's correct. 
it is scary. Well, it is, but it's also necessary to know that these things occur. Because if you don't have any fear in your heart, you don't have any deterrent when you try to start thinking about doing crazy things. You know why I never lied to my mama? Because she'd bust my ass if I got caught doing it. That's why. And I knew that. That fear is actually reverence, not terror. And that fear is necessary for the good of a mind so that you can censor yourself. So you don't have to be told not to do bad things. You can tell yourself, hey, that's going to get me in trouble. Maybe I shouldn't do that. That's called a conscience. You get a conscience by getting your ass tore up when you're young. And if you'll read the Bible, there's a lot of that going on when the world was young. A lot of ass tearing up. And then there's a lot of propping up when they're older. Because now they've learned right from wrong, but they still need a leg up. And God's right there to give it. He always has been, he always will be. And how do I know I'm right? They don't give these to just anybody. That's called a credential. That says, he's smart enough to talk about this subject. Signed by the state. Something like that. It don't mean nothing. It's just a piece of paper. And I'm just joking. Did you guys enjoy it tonight? Did you have a good time? Are you still with me, anybody? Who's the other person that's still here? Is that Kevin? Probably. Everybody else bailed. I don't blame you. I'd run too if God was after me. Well, my little vacation's over. I gotta get up in the morning and get back to work. I slept all day yesterday and all day today. Only I got up to do the podcast, and that's it. Oh, and to go get something to eat. And that's it. That's all I've done in two days. I should be good and recuperated. It's time to get back to work. But, you know, I put out a lot of energy on the show, so there ain't a lot left when I'm done. kind of takes me a little while to get over it get my electrolytes back up. Get my body to stop aching. We're here. Night, brother. Good night, brother. Thank you for hanging. It's good for you. Yeah, it's something. That's why God made drugs. Keep you going. Sometimes I wonder if I could keep going without them. But that's all right. I'm on never mind the mule, just load the wagon. That's what my mama taught me. That's what I've always done. Don't worry about the mule, just load the wagon. We'll get her done. I got a bunch of stuff. I told you about my new amplifier. I finally drug out this old uh, speaker cabinet that I have, big old 412 cabinet, that I'm gonna put under that amp. And it should be quite nice, quite powerful. Yes, I love you. Excellent show. Thank you, ma'am. As always, I'm happy to do it for you. Come see me next time. Jazz hands. Yeah, I just date myself like I did. Anyway, yes, ladies and gentlemen, I'm old. I've been around the block. I know what a variety show is. That's how old I am. You ever see those memes? 
where they'll show like a tape deck and say, I'm this old, or they'll show something from the 70s, like a roll of caps, I'm this old. I ought to put out a picture of Carol Burnett pulling on her ear and go, I'm this old. <laughs> Yep, that would look awesome. It should. It's a pretty big cabinet. It's a big boy amp. It's the first one I've had in a long, long time. Finally got me a big boy amp. And it's loud, too. Make your ears bleed. Good for you. Got rock and roll all over it. It performed very well. I played with it Saturday night. And, uh, first time I used it in a live environment, you know. It did very good. Did a good job. I was happy about it. Definitely didn't have any trouble hearing me. I didn't even have to mic it. Yeah, most of the time I put a mic on my amp, run it out in front. Didn't have to do that with this amp. It'll roll right off the stage. Stop, you're making me laugh so hard with the old stuff. Much love to you all. Have a great day tomorrow. I'm going to try. Try to get something done tomorrow. And if I have enough time, I'm going to cut my grass again because it's growing like ragweed. I just cut it last week. It's ready to cut again. I think it was Wednesday or Thursday when I cut it. I can't remember exactly when. I think it was Wednesday that I cut it. But one week later, it's ready to cut again. Too much growth. The good thing is, is I just have to trim off the top now. Before I had to cut the grass, it's been growing for a long time, so it was a hard, hard job to cut it off because it's like knee high. Now I just got to skim over the top, so it won't be no job at all. It'll be real easy, just running around with the lawnmower. I might even put the wheels on it, and ride it. I got one of those lawnmowers right now that you can. It's powered, self-powered, drives itself. And there's a little attachment you can put on the back of it. It's got one wheel like a unicycle, and then you stand on that, and you ride along behind it. It's pretty cool. Might take a little getting used to, but I'm, I think I'm, think I'm going to do it that way tomorrow. First things first, I was getting my motorcycle put back together. I got it fixed. Now I just got to put it all back together. I had to take it down to the nub just to get to the belt because for whatever reason they designed that bike, the belt goes inside the motor and over several things that go through the body of the bike. So you got to take all that out and take the motor apart to get to the pulley so that you can put the belt on. And then you got to put all that stuff back in between it and put the motor back together. It's a big pain in the ass. There's got to be a better way to do that. I'm thinking about converting it to a chain. Because chains don't break nearly as much as uh, Kevlar belts do. But uh, I haven't decided yet whether I'm going to do that or not. Maybe save that for another time. All right, boys and girls, we've reached the top of the hour and I'm ready for bed. So I love you very much. Have a great night. Thank you guys for hanging out. I hope you enjoyed the show, and uh, I'll see you guys on Wednesday with a little letting your hair down and having a good time. We might even do a hammock broadcast. Might do hammock time. That sounds fun. Might do that. Might make me a bonfire and just sit outside. Won't you do me a favor when you go out into the world tomorrow? Be kind to somebody. Watch it change your life. All you got to do is show a little love, and you'll see it change everybody around you. They'll all respond in kind. To the kindness you show. Let your inner light shine and prove that God's words are true with every move you make. And people will want that and they'll come towards you for it. Bring them right on into the fold. That's how you do it. I love you. I hope you have a great night. Happy Father's Day, belated. 
and I will see you guys on Wednesday. Thanks for watching.